Here are more examples of conditional statements, converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Lesson 2.2b, it follows 2.2a. If you become lost or confused, just click the description. We now know, because of that previous video 2.2a, conditional statements are if-then statements. And the hypothesis follows if, the conclusion follows then. And to prove a conditional statement is false, we need only one counterexample. Don't need a lot of them, just one. Conditional statements have truth value. There's value to how true they are. And the negation of a statement P is not P. It's the opposite. We also learned it's less confusing to use the logical negation symbol, this symbol, for not than to use the tilde, this symbol, because the tilde has so many different meanings in mathematics. We showed that in the last video. It could mean similar. It could be for probability. It could be for matrices. So this is just advice. I use this for not usually, and it'll make it less confusing for everybody and for yourself. Negation. So here we have a true statement. I have a dog named Lola, and that's a true statement. I do have a dog named Lola. She's right there. See Lola? So to negate this true statement, we turn have into don't have. I don't have a dog named Lola. The negation of a true statement is false. Saying I don't have a dog named Lola is false because I do. Now here's a false statement. I have a pet ostrich. I don't really have a pet ostrich. That's false. My yard is way too small and I wouldn't even know how to take care of an ostrich. Now we can negate this and say I don't have a pet ostrich. The negation of a false statement is true. It's true. I don't have a pet ostrich. Converse. The statement formed by swapping the hypothesis and conclusion. So the hypothesis is purple, the conclusion is green, we swap them, so hopefully my color coordination can help you. The conditional statement, if the bird can fly, then the bird has wings. The converse is, if the bird has wings, then the bird can fly. Now think about that. If a bird has wings, then the bird can fly? Well, this converse is false. I can think of a counterexample. Penguins, they have wings, but they can't fly. So we've proved the converse is false. It has no truth value. A conditional statement is false when the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. Here's inverse, the statement formed by negating the hypothesis and conclusion. So our same conditional statement, if the bird can fly, then the bird has wings. The inverse would be, if the bird cannot fly, then the bird doesn't have wings. This inverse is false. I can think of a counterexample, an ostrich. It has wings, but it can't fly. And a lot of the birds in New Zealand, and I think some in Australia that even have vestigial wings, they're wings, but they can't fly. The inverse has no truth value. Contrapositive, the statement formed by both swapping and negating the hypothesis and conclusion. So the hypothesis and conclusion are going to swap places and we're going to negate both of them. Our conditional statement, if the bird can fly, then the bird has wings. The contrapositive would be, if the bird has no wings, then the bird can't fly. This contrapositive is true. And if you threw the bird through the air, that's not really flying. It just kind of is going where it was thrown, right? Now sometimes all the related statements can be true. Here's some examples. The conditional statement is true. If it's worth 100 pennies, then it's worth a dollar. Yeah, 100 pennies has the same value as a dollar. That's true. The converse would be, if it's worth a dollar, then it's worth 100 pennies. Well, that's true, too. Same value. The inverse is, if it's not worth 100 pennies, then it's not worth a dollar. That's also true. The contrapositive would be, if it's not worth a dollar, then it's not worth 100 pennies. Yep, that's true. All four of these related statements are true. They are all logically equivalent. And sometimes this happens with related statements. You know what else happens sometimes? Sometimes all the related statements are false. So here's our conditional. If a number is a multiple of two, then it's a multiple of three. That's not true. That's false. I can think of a counterexample, two. That's a multiple of two, but it's not a multiple of three. The converse would be, 
if a number is a multiple of three, then it's a multiple of two. Well, that's false, because I can think of a counterexample, nine. That's a multiple of three, but it's not a multiple of two. The inverse would be, if a number is not a multiple of two, then it's not a multiple of three. That's false. The counterexample is nine. Nine is not a multiple of two, but it is a multiple of three. Our contrapositive would be, if a number is not a multiple of three, then it's not a multiple of two. Well, that's false. The counterexample is four. Four is not a multiple of three, and it is a multiple of two. See? All four of these related statements are false. They are all logically equivalent. They have no truth value. And sometimes this happens with related statements, okay? So sometimes all four of them can be true, or sometimes all four of them could be false. And sometimes the conditional statement and the contrapositive are true, and the converse and the inverse are false, like over here with these examples. These two were false, but the conditional and the contrapositive were true. Our next lesson is using deductive reasoning to verify conjectures, lesson 2.3. I hope you're doing well. I hope this cleared up any confusion from the previous video and you now understand all of these terms and how to do these. And I'm proud of you. Keep trying. And I'll see you next time. Bye.